who move it and seconded Councillor Henshin was first. Sorry, Councillor Jones. Um, actually, before we go on to item 6.6, .6, I would just like to bring everyone's attention that today is um, International Women's Day um, and today it's um, so we need to um, embrace equity for International Women's Day. As, um, I moved it, seconded by Councillor Henshin to resume the meeting. Um, no, it was six, it was six to zero. Um, okay, so International Women's Day. Um, so I'm just reading this off their website. So this is to celebrate women's achievements and to raise awareness about discrimination, take action to drive gender equity parity. International Women's Day belongs to everyone, everywhere. Inclusion means all, inclusion means all. So the International Women's Day action is valid. So um, collectively we can all embrace equity in a world where, where difference is valued and celebrated. So I'd just like to make mention of the International Women's Day today. Thank you very much. So with that said, um, we might move on to um, item number 6.6, .6, page 48 of your agendas, I believe. Um, so we have um, a motion in front of us. So um, Mayor Otto, would I call on you, please, with regards... 6.6, 6, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, look, uh, I suppose I'd just like to move the motion that Council Committee recommends to Council, the Council consult with Sherberg Aboriginal Shire Council and the appropriate traditional owners with a view to placing culturally appropriate recognition of the traditional owners on the back of South Bennett Village and town entry signs. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you very much. So, um, so you've moved that motion. We have a seconder from Councillor Jones. Thank you very much. Did you want to speak to your motion, Mr Mayor? Yeah, thanks very much. Of course, we now, uh, thankfully, uh, the Waka Waka people have received their federal determination in relation to their traditional lands, and we welcome that. Um, and there has been, uh, I think, quite a strong uh, degree of support across our region for recognising the traditional owners of the land uh, upon which we enjoy our lives these days. Um, there is some uncertainty, of course, in areas around Jurong and Blackbutt uh, as to traditional ownership there, and there may or may not be determinations in place. I'm not sure. Uh, this is an area of uncertainty. I think that we need to obviously tread through, uh, walk through very slowly and sensitively. Uh, and as such, I'm suggesting that we, in the first instance, that we, we speak with the council at Sherberg. Uh, we do have traditional owners on the council, and that we also then get and from that get their advice as to who other appropriate traditional ownership groups would be. Really just a process of let's start the conversation around which, signage, which signs are in which areas and what would be appropriate uh, in terms of a process to, uh, once we get to that point, to design something up uh, that would meet with the, um, obviously, uh, meet the status, would be to the satisfaction of those traditional owners and, and, rightly, and rightly acknowledge um, uh, you know, our First Nations people in our area. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor Otto. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't this motion put forward about two years ago and we all agreed to it, if I'm correct? I know we've had these discussions before. I think that was put on hold because there was some uncertainty. There wasn't a Waka Waka determination at that time and there was some uncertainty as to other peoples in other parts of our region. So I distinctly remember uh, recommending the council that we put this on hold until some of that was clarified. So really just we wanted to start the process again and start the conversations with our, um, uh, with our First Nations people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Councillor Henshin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr Mayor, for that motion. And just it was brought to our attention at Bunduma just recently that that is to be acknowledged as the Willy Willy uh, people. I think there's a bit of work to do in this space, and I believe, Councillor Jones, you have uh, different traditional owners down in some of your boundary areas down there as well, as we may encompass throughout the region, but there's probably a bit of work that needs yeah. to be done, and certainly a lot of liaison with the respective traditional owners to make sure we get this right. Yeah. Um, Councillor Duff. 
No, thank you. Yes, very supportive. But I was, um, yeah, thinking that we could um, say welcome to Wacker. Thank you for visiting Wacker Wacker Country or something like that. And then um, found out that that, um, as Councillor Henson said, it's actually Auburn Hawkwood Country. And I think that the Blackbutt area is still under determination. If I correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. So they still haven't decided that. So it's probably timely to investigate it. But we we'll have to wait for the determination of the Blackbutt area to actually do that section there. But yeah, really keen to support. Thank you. Um, yes, absolutely supportive. I know uh, I pulled up the similar report from the 2nd of June 2021 where we all supported it, the same motion. Um, that time the motion was that Council note the options available and seek input from the traditional owners across the region prior to bringing the report back to a future infrastructure standing committee. Um, and that was carried <coughs> at the 2nd of June uh, 2021 meeting. So certainly supportive of picking up where we left off and um, progressing this now that determination has been has been awarded to the Waka Waka people, but also recognise the importance of acknowledging all other tribes um, with a connection to country. Um, I guess just a thought as well that I'd like considered when we're having these conversations, those the backs of those sides are beautiful canvases. And I know, Councillor Jones, you were able to, um, in Blackbutt, get some uh, traditional owners and to paint some beautiful murals in Blackbutt. I actually wondered if there might be an opportunity for us to think about this as a, a little bit differently, this project, rather than going through and progressing signage as such, whether we could um, potentially commission an art piece from relative traditional owners in each area where they may actually be able to paint on the backs of those signs a, a mural or something representative of their country. Um, so very keen to have those conversations and I guess just <coughs> seeking counsel, um, sort of sharing my thoughts, but I think there's another opportunity here to perhaps use the backs of those signs in a really progressive way um, that could be renewed over time as well. Um, so they're my thoughts in relation to this motion. Certainly supportive of it then and supportive of it now. Thank you very much, Councillor Shoemaker. Councillor Duff? Uh, just a, a question. Um, just thinking perhaps we need to put a timeline on this because um, and the other one was put, put like it, let's investigate, but it, because it didn't have a timeline, it didn't actually come back. But could we maybe put a report be brought back or something just to so that there's some... some um, we mostly put a timeline around things, and I just think that it'd be um, prudent to do that on this occasion. So, just just making that comment. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, I might throw over to GM Meehan with regards to that. So, oh, okay, sorry. Thanks, so, so thanks, anyway. Chair. So, uh, through you, Chair, the uh, Mayor was absolutely correct. Uh, from recollection of it, it was the uncertainty with the determinations. So that was why the other ones drifted out a little bit. Timelines, yeah, happy to, but. Yeah, it's just um, the other one, it wasn't because of lack of desire and it's um, and certainly uh, deputations with Director Generals over a long period of time even uh, have encouraged TMR to put up um, the, the way they play the trivia questions, whose country are you entering now? And you could have that on the TMR highway network at, um, up the Bruce and everywhere else, that'd be just terrific. But um, yeah, if Council wishes to put a timeline on it, no trouble at all, but the other one was sort of got a little bit un unsteady over uh, determination. Um, thank you very much, CEO Mark. Councillor Shoemaker? Um, yes, thank you. Probably just a question to our Indigenous um, portfolio holder, Councillor Duff. Like, is this something that you can head up and drive in your role and capacity as Indigenous portfolio holder, um, being that you probably have those relationships or connections um, and bring something back to Council? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Happy to. I'd love to do, to do that. No problem at all. Um, thank you very much. Um, I really love your idea of those um, TMR signs because I love those quizzes along the way, to be quite honest, I, um, especially heading up north. They tend to break the monotony a little bit. Um, so if there's no more um, comments, so we're happy with this. So the count... Um, yeah, so, sorry, yes, um, Mr Mayor, before we vote. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Schumacher. It was a resolution of June, but but the fact is that we did put this on hold because of committee concerns as to appropriate uh, recognition of traditional owners. Um, so it certainly wasn't the staff weren't doing their job. It was more that we, we um, it wasn't appropriate to move forward at that time. 
think it is now. Um, we've got the Waka Waka determination. There is some uncertainty. I've talked to Waka Waka people about Geelong. Um, we need to be really careful in this space. Uh, and I've also talked to people in Blackbutt from both from different sectors. We have to be careful there. So this does need to be handled, Council, uh, and particularly in our media and communications, very, very slowly, very carefully and very sensitively. And I think what's key to all this is that we do have strong and productive engagement with the relevant parties involved. Um, welcome Councillor Duff leading that, particularly with her um, having that portfolio. Um, and in terms of a time frame, Mr CEO, you know, I, I don't think we should rush this. Let's start the process, but let's not rush it. Uh, look, if it takes 12 months, it takes 12 months. But I, I don't, I'm probably not keen to lock in a time frame. I think I'd rather start the process and let's see how it rolls because, you know, we don't want to rush our First Nations people on this. I think we need to be guided by them. And certainly in terms of the artwork, that was always the intention, Councillor Shoemaker, is that we would obviously allow our First Nations people to very much guide and direct how they'd like to see it done rather than us saying to them, oh, we want to use local artists or whatever. I think we need to be guided and led by them in this process. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. That, uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much, Mayor Otto. So we'll put that to a vote. Those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Motion is carried. So the next one is... Um, 6.7, notice of motion 6.7, removal of tree in McAllister Street, Mergen. Um, Councillor Duff, I'll um, pass over to you to talk to the motion. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Just um, This one was brought to me to my attention by the Mergen Business and Development Association. There's a large hoop pine tree in front of the Mergen Ancient Songberg Centre in McAllister Street that they want um, to have it removed. Um, but I think that obviously it needs to be community consultation around that, so that's why I've put that wording, council undertakes community consultation, obtain quotes, and then a report be brought back to the standing committee meeting on the 10th of May. But it's just on the back of the um, request from the Mergen Business and Development Association. I know I met with um, manager Leanne, we talked about that tree and we were, there was, you were going to do a report I think it was going to be just cut back the dangerous parts and make like the, where they think that the some is it pine cones or something that was a, a safety concern. I think you're going to address that and leave, leave it at that. But I think now the from the business community they're saying they actually want the tree removed. So that's where this has come from. Thank you very much, Councillor Duff. So, Councillor Duff, did you want to? Um, Move your motion. Sorry, yes, I'll move that motion. Okay, can we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Jones, thank you very much. Okay, did anyone want to speak? Oh, Councillor Jones, thank you. Yes, I do. Uh, Councillor Duff, uh, or through you, Chair, to Councillor Duff, um, would you consider putting in there that it's obviously a hoop pine and uh, the timber can be uh, used, maybe give it to the Mergen Men's Shed or something like that. If you're going to take it down and we do take it down, can we give, I don't know whether it's able to, are we able to gift it to the Mergen Men's Shed for them to uh, utilise and potentially get some uh, use out of the tree? Because hoop pine is used for furniture and timber and whatever else. Just a comment, rather than see it burn. Um, thank you, Councillor Jones. Um, we might go to CEO Mark to answer that question or are going to um, Acting GM Leanne? Um, yeah, we can look at that through the community consultation process for this um, and have those discussions with the men's shed or other community organisations at Mergen if they're interested in the actual timber itself and, and then we can investigate the options then if there's an interested party in the timber. Um, just to, to note, we, we certainly have inspected this tree. Our tree arborist on staff has inspected this tree. Um, the tree is not deemed to be unsafe or unhealthy, um, so it's it's probably more now looking at the tree in terms of its location. Is it is it a concern uh, for surrounding infrastructure um, like the Songbird Centre um, footpath power lines? Um, but I just want to note that we have 
quite a large list of trees that are going to be inspected throughout the region. Um, we have a number of trees um, of, that require urgent attention in the Nango and we're going to bring a report back to council because there are some trees that are um, in, in a dangerous state and, and need to be removed and we just don't have the budget for those removal costs of those trees. So. Um, yeah, it's not just this one isolated tree I see, that there is a number of trees. And I've been working with um, Councillor Erkins on just preparing that list and, and organising and inspections and meetings with those, those members. So, um, yeah, more than happy to add this tree to that list. Um, so we've got a number of trees throughout the region that we'd like to look at and bring a report back to Council. Um, and in most cases, yes, we will need to run community consultation with either individuals or, in this case, um, the Mergen Business Group. Um, thank you very much. Councillor Erkins. Through you, Madam Chair. I'm a little concerned um, about taking trees out that if there is no issue with them. Um, I do know that I have been speaking to um, council officers about some in Nanango that are um, of concern because they are dangerous. And I also know that the community consultation that we did in Mergen about removing those trees from the park, you know, I'm really disappointed in that. When I was there, I told people that those trees were going to be relocated. I drove through Mergen yesterday and honestly, in my opinion, that park looks like a concrete jungle without those trees in is such, it definitely is not a, an improvement. What has been done there, there's, there's shade shelters, sure, but you know the shade, they only give shade if you're underneath the, the shelters. And as I said, I mean, we told those people that those trees were going to be relocated. The reason they weren't was because I believe the cost of relocating, but to me, if I go out and do community consultation and I tell people something, you know, I don't want to then have to have it held against me that what I said didn't happen. Because the most people that I spoke to, when I said they're taking the, do you want to see the trees gone? Most people said to me, no, we don't. I was actually told that I was asking the question wrong and what I should have been asking was, are you happy to see if we relocate those trees? That's when people said, yes, okay, if they're going to be relocated. But as I said, I mean, I believe that the end result there, I understand it's not finished, but at this stage, it definitely is not an improvement, in my opinion, to that park. So I would be very reluctant about pulling down a tree if there's nothing wrong with it unless there was true community consultation. Not ask half a dozen people that walk past you and ask them in such a way that you get the answer that you're looking for. So that's just my opinion on that matter. Thank you, Councillor Erkins. Mayor Otto. Yeah, thanks very much. I spent a lot of time in Mergen. I grew up there, so there aren't too many people in Mergen that I don't know. And Councillor Erkins, I'm going to dis dis disagree with you respectfully. Um, first of all, uh, this tree is an issue. Um, I've watched this tree drop limbs over many years. It continues to drop limbs right on top of where people walk on a regular basis. Now, the limbs come from the upper part of the tree. I know it's not dead, but these hoop pines do have a tendency to drop limbs from time to time. We are seeing more extreme weather events, councillors, where we're seeing more storms, more wind, and the last time we had a lot of wind through Mergen, it dropped branches. And it's right over the top of a walking path. So I believe there is an issue, Councillor Erkins, that needs to be addressed. I don't believe the MBDA would have raised it if there wasn't. I think they've got better things to do with their time than uh, spend on things like this. They're all private business people. They didn't bring this to us because they were trying to hoodwink us. They brought it to it because it is a genuine concern, Councillor Erkins. In addition to that, I... I I, uh, I'm disappointed to hear you say that about the park. I think we should wait until the park's finished. Um, there's a lot of work to go on there yet in terms of the natural elements to go in, the grass and other things. Let's wait till it's finished before we pass judgment on the work that our design team have done with the community. Um, and I can tell you that I've been in Mergen on several occasions in the last month and I've walked up and down the street and said to people, what do you think about the removal of the fig trees? And I'm sorry, Councillor Erkins, I haven't found one person say to me, that they were unhappy to see those fig trees gone. 
As for telling people that uh, community consultation around the removal of the trees, it was my understanding that we were always going to remove two of the trees anyway, um, and that the third tree was going to be possibly relocated, that that was the plan. So I'm not sure where you got your information about removing all three trees, um, because my understanding wasn't the original concept design, but I stand to be corrected. That was what I thought was happening, unless we changed that along the way. I do know we changed the decision to, um, to actually, uh, because of the cost, $20,000 to relocate the third tree. I don't think that was a bad decision. I think we had no choice on that. Um, because it was just a cost factor. So, you know, in all fairness to the staff, I think they're doing a great job down there. I think the committee is going to be pleasantly su surprised when they see it finished. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And I, I support this. I think um, we need to go and do our investigations. All Council Dove is asking for that we investigate it and we consult the community on this uh, and bring a report back in two months' time. I can't see why we can't do that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor Erkins. Mr Mayor, we were told when we went to do that community cons consultation that all three trees were going to be relocated. Maybe what we should have done was got the cost of relocating the trees before we went out and told the community what we were going to do. Thank you. Um, so with... Oh, sorry, Councillor Shoemaker. Um, yes, thank you. And thank you, Manager Leanne, for the report. Certainly, I think... Um, it's really important that we are doing these tree reviews regularly. It's great to hear that there will be more information coming back um, to the table about that. I, you know, I do believe that trees do soften an environment and we have had a number of members of the community in the chamber telling us that they would like to see more trees in um, and across the region. Uh, it's always sad to lose big trees and I know the consultation <coughs> process is it's very hard um, and I'm also very mindful of the costs and to be honest, I'd rather be putting money toward planting more trees, not cutting them down. Um, I look forward to the report coming back and, and more information of, about this and certainly agree with Councillor Jones' sentiment that if we can, if this tree does have to come down, um, you know, hoop pine, it's a beautiful commodity, it would be wonderful to see it um, donated back to the community. Um, it would be such a shame when you see in areas like North Lakes and the like where they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars buying large hoop vine trees to put in residential areas and the like because they offer such um, gorgeous atmosphere and really do cool the streets. So um, I look forward to the report. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, um, Councillor Duff, and thank you, Leanne, for the work on this. Um, thank you very much. Um, just mindful um, to you, General Manager Leanne, that you seem to, I know you've got a lot of reports um, on your plate at the moment, so um, I'm just trying to figure out when you've got time to do those in amongst your normal work. But um, they've got the, a report to be provided to the Standing Committee on the 10th of May. Um, would that report include the, um, the community consultation and not just with the Mergen Business Development Association, would that include the consultation work with the community as well? Or do we need to change that date? Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to that. Um, certainly I would suggest that we push that date out a little bit. We do not have a parks coordinator recruited yet, so we're, we're down um, with our staff. So. And as I, as I mentioned, there is a number of other tree reports that we're investigating and they have been in the system for several months. So I'm just mindful that we've got a number of other ones that um, are equally as important, if not more important than this one, um, and we need to get to them as well. So yes, would certainly like to see that date pushed out to at least after July um, so we can recruit our staff and have the appropriate resources to um, manage all the tree inspections. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Duff? Yeah, Acting Chair, you're happy to change that to July. That's no problem. Yeah, and yes, I'd like to add the, um, <clears throat> the point that Deputy Mayor Jones suggested about um, the liaising with the men's shed to see if they could um, utilise the timber. So we're doing that as a dot point as well? Yep. So that's the A's with.
Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes, Councillor Henshaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to counsel it off, um, and just from my experience, fully supportive of that, but maybe put community uh, organisations rather than just uh, signal out because, and the only reason I say that is I've offered timber to uh, a particular entity here in, in the region and they just have too much and they can't take it. So perhaps change that to community organisations. Thank you. I'll with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would actually like to see Council have a standing policy. If we take a tree, we need to plant a tree in its place. Um, that's one of my personal beliefs. You can't just keep pulling trees down. They need to be replaced with one or even two more to take its place for the future of our um, the future of our land. Um, so if there's no more comments with regards to this one, I'll go back to you, Councillor Duff, if you want to write a reply. Happy to go to the vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Duff. Um, we'll go straight to the vote for, um, for item 6.7. Um, the, the, I'll just read it here, that the council undertakes community consultation as to the removal of the hoop pine from the front of the, the Mergen Ancient Songberg Centre in McAllister Street, Mergen. Point two, council obtained quotes to have the tree removed. Point three, a report is provided to the standing committee meeting in July 2020. 23 and point four that liaise with community organizations in regards to utilizing the timber from the hoop pine tree all those in favor all those in favor um that's everyone except councillor erkins those against councillor erkins um motion is carried thank you very much So we're up to notice of motion 6.8, um, the Hart Street Black Butt um, Pedestrian Path Works. Um, Mayor, Mayor Otto, did you want to speak to this one? Thanks very much, Madam Chair. I hope this won't take too long. Look, I've just uh, been approached by residents uh, down in that part of the world about this particular section of pedestrian pathway uh, that has for some time, I believe, been problematic with overgrown grass that is now obviously uh, impacting on the bitumen seal. Um, and they have put in custom requests and tried to work through the process, but I'm not sure where that is at, but I'd just like to see um, council support to see if we can get our parks and gardens guys to get this into the program so that we can uh, have that matter addressed for that community uh, down there. Um, but uh, happy to answer any questions along the way. Thanks, Madam Chair. So, um, so Mr Mayor, you would like to move that motion? Sorry. Yes, I'll move the motion. Thank you. Okay. Can we have a seconder for the motion? Thank you, Councillor Jones. Um, did anyone want to, did you want to speak to your motion again? No, Councillor Jones. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, yeah, and thanks, Mayor, for bringing this up. And you did refer that it's gone through customer requests. And I will, I know the person that, uh, or at least one of the people that you've spoke to, and I'm looking forward to having a chat with this particular person face to face and some of the comments he's made around our staff and all the rest of it. <clears throat> but can I just say that this was brought to uh, our staff and unfortunately there was a misunderstanding and they went down to address this and they went to a different section and it was a, a total misunderstanding and it, no fault of anyone really, but just to let you know, Mr Mayor, that this has been in the system, there has been customer requests and they did go down to attend it and they do hope to uh, add it in and make sure it's a regular thing on the uh, parks and gardens process. So uh, it was well underway, but um, I do know one gentleman, I, it's, I've had feedback and uh, I'll, I'll address that situation on behalf of the, uh, on, uh, the staff and the comments he's made around our staff. So happy to take that conversation out personally. So. But yeah, no, fully support it. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Councillor Erkins. I'm a little concerned. I, I just don't understand the process here. We've got a number of footpaths in Nanango that are an issue. I thought that they were being that they go through the staff and through the um, process and they're repaired or done whenever. If somebody is coming to me and saying they've got a, a specific issue, I thought the procedure was that we put in a customer request. It just appears to me that we're getting all these notices of motion come up on an ad hoc basis mm -hmm. and I, I just don't see how that is working for the community as a whole. I was told very plainly when I came into council that I was here to represent the community as a whole, not just my region, but it just seems, I mean, I can go in and 
is that the procedure that I come or that I send in a notice of motion to get the footpath in front of the Palace Hotel done, or I get the footpath leading down to the um, bridge done, or I get the pothole here? It, it, I'm just under confusion as to what is actually done. I was under the impression, as I said, that we put in a customer request for something that's an issue, that we don't bring it here where we're all basically grandstanding for items. Oh, look, I'm going to um, absolutely refute that, Councillor. That's absolutely inappropriate. I am not grandstanding on this matter and I would seek an apology from the Councillor. I have been approached by a number of people in Blackbutt about this issue. There have been customer requests go in on this issue. This chamber is a place where we speak for our community. And that's all I'm doing. And I'm tired of being accused of grandstanding, councillor. And I would expect an apology, Madam Chair, because that is inappropriate and it's incorrect. I have not had discussions, perhaps, with the person that Councillor Jones spoke with, because the gentleman that I spoke with about this matter most recently in no way was critical of the council staff. In fact, he was quite um, respectful and acknowledging the great work that our Parks and Gardens staff have done around Blackbutt. Um, so this was not a criticism of council or our staff down there. This was a frustration from the community that they'd continue to raise the issue. It had not been dealt with. They came to me as the mayor that they elected to represent them. And that is what I'm doing here today in representing them. And this is going to continue to happen, councillors. Get used to it. Because there will be notice of motions coming thick and fast while I'm in a chair as a councillor. Because if I feel that our processes aren't working for our community and our community approach me, this chamber is the right place to raise them. This is not the federal parliament. This is a local council chamber where we represent our local people. That's why we have local government. Local, underline local government. We are a council, and I will not apologise for that, but I would seek an apology. This is not grandstanding. Never has been, never will be. This is about me following up on a matter for the good people of Blackbutt, and that's me simply doing my job, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Erkins. Mr Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong. If somebody comes to me and says that they've put in a customer request and nothing has been done, I was under the impression that I would contact the relevant general manager and ask them to look into it. I was not under the impression that I would bring it to council. So I, I see there are lots and lots of notices coming in, Mr Mayor, that I believe could be handled internally and not be... You say looking after our community. I agree, that's what we're here for. But it's also looking after our staff who are sitting here while we're bringing up things that I'm sure could be handled internally. I just don't know why we are coming here for so many things that I was under the impression perhaps I'm wrong, perhaps I wasn't instructed correctly. I was under the impression there was a process for getting things done, and this just does not appear to be the process that I was told. Well, I'm not sure what you've been told, Councillor, but if I could answer the question, Madam Chair, yes, we have um, standing orders. Uh, those standing, or we have a, a, a process for customer requests, which I know is coming through Council. Process has been followed here, Councillor, um, but part of that process is the right of every Councillor, including the Mayor, to bring issues to this Chamber. However small or large the Council may see it, that is our right. That is enshrined in a policy document that we have and I believe is fundamental to local council. Uh, so, you know, follow the process absolutely in terms of customer requests and follow up with general managers. That is correct. But if you then feel that the matter hasn't been resolved, we are all entitled to bring this to the chamber. And, Madam Chair, I would again seek an apology for an allegation of grandstanding because I do not use this chamber as a place to grandstand and I will not accept that statement. Thank you. So, Mr Mayor, can I ask you, did you then contact the general manager of that to ask why they hadn't looked into it? Or did you just bring it straight here for, to a council meeting? I'd have to go back and check the conversations that have been had. But, uh, look, I brought it to the council meeting because I want the matter resolved once and for all. I have raised matters with general managers in the past. I'm not going to go into that. But I'm well and truly entitled to bring this matter to the council meeting, and that's the bottom line, Councillor. Um, Radio, we might. Okay. Councillor Erkins. 
An I don't apology. believe that I owe you an apology on this um, situation, Mr. Mayor. I believe that if you if you can um, show me that you did go through the the accepted channels, mm. then I'll apologise. So I'll take that as a question on notice. I believe. Um, we're just consulting um, some paperwork. Um, in the meantime, Councillor Shoemaker. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I just had a question for, I don't know whether it's um, Manager Leanne or Manager Aaron, just in relation to our footpath programs, um, and what, kind of, what kind of actual inspection or maintenance do we do? Like I know that we set every year a capital program that says we'll spend X amount of dollars on footpaths and then we plan those. But in terms of actual maintenance, ongoing maintenance like these issues, what's what do we actually currently do in this regard? I threw Madam Chair, if I might just answer the councillor's question. So we have the forward footpath program, which is based on a condition assessment that we do usually at valuation time. Um, generally with footpaths, we don't do a regular inspection annually. We're not resourced to do that at this point in time. We normally will respond to a customer request um, for, for maintenance um, on a section, it, it, you know, generally if it's a, a complaint, um, we'll go and have a look at that. We have a nominal allocation in our footpath maintenance budget where we'll go through and do works. Uh, this one here is is probably, um, a, from a maintenance point of view, it's, it's one that ha happy to go and resolve it um, and probably just have a chat with, with Leanne, um, particularly with some of these ones that are relation to, to mowing. And I know the one that we spoke about the other day in um, Nurgan, um, it, the, the bitumen ones are, are a little bit more difficult to maintain, obviously. So there's probably an opportunity for us to um, uh, just have a review um, if we are, uh, how we might be able to report some of these bitumen footpath issues. Because you, similar to a road, you do have grass coming through them. You, you're not trying to mow footpaths, but there may need to be a, a treatment option put into some of these bitumen ones. To, similar to the rail trail. We, we did talk to Leanne about the rail trail yesterday. Similar sort of issues where you start to have grass breaking through and those sort of things. Um, we do not have a routine maintenance program to deal with that. We will, it's, a, it's usually by um, request. And just, sorry, a supplementary question. Just in terms of bitumen footpaths, because I know historically, um, certainly around Nanango, I know there are lots of them. Um, it was sort of a common practice to build bitumen footpaths. And I had a number of residents in my division actually ask because footpaths are a bit of a commodity in some of these high populated um rural residential areas where people are trying to get to school and alike. And one of the solutions was potentially putting in a bitumen footpath, which would be a cheaper option. Um, in terms of these bitumen footpaths, like I, from what I've seen in my time in council, we don't actually construct them anymore. And, and if we don't, I guess, how do we make sure that issues like this are, are sort of, there's a systematic review of them, I guess is my question. Uh, three, three, Madam Chair. I think it's probably uh, once we get through probably the next um, twelve months with their reaper and those sort of things. I think there's an opportunity for us to review some of these assets and what what are the the long term strategy for those. Um, I'm, I myself am not a fan of bitumen footpaths. They they do serve a purpose for longer sections. So bitumen just 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 in way in the discussion we had about the rail trail. Bitumen is designed to be driven on and it's it becomes quite rigid and if it's not driven on, so but if you built the rail trail out of concrete it would value be through the roof. So it just doesn't work. So there is a, it's probably a fit for purpose, but also understanding too that if we do have them, that they do need an increased maintenance treatment, particularly if they're not being used, so um, or they're not being driven on or loaded to the to their design. We have not constructed them in my time and where it's always been concrete. Um, but I think we do need to consider that, um, and similar to the discussion that we had in Mergen and, and, and note your comments about in your division um, and other divisions, they are they are an ageing issue that I think we need to look at, particularly in replacing, um, particularly if they become a priority over constructing new footpaths, if, if that's a bit like backlog, same as road essentially. So, But I think once we get through the Reaper and the flood damage, I think this will be one of our next challenges. Okay, thank you. Um, we actually need to go back a little bit, so we need to refer to the um, the conduct the 
the code of conduct um, policy with regards to um, the mayor's wanting of an apology. So I might hand over to CEO Mark here. Okay, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. The, if I can just clarify, so um, the chair and I were just having a look at the standing orders. So um, there's a couple of sections in the standing orders, particularly uh, dealing with an apology and or withdrawing of the comments, uh, unsuitable conduct by a councillor or, um, and then you go acts of disorder, which uh, both go to the point. It throws it upon the chair and um, Mr. Mayor, if I can, it's, it was the comment of grandstanding, I'm taking it as the issue and concern. So uh, the chair would be required to make a ruling if um, on that, dependent on where we were, but if the councillor was uh, voluntarily to, um, withdraw and or apologise for that comment um, that would satisfy the code as I'm reading, or the standing orders as I'm reading it. There's two different sections in there. It would just, if if uh, the councillor, and certainly not advising do, don't, or, or taking uh, any position on it, but if the councillor doesn't, I, I would imagine it would take a different process. Uh, if I could, Mr. CEO, in response, um, section 3.5, 3.9 of our policy, uh, then, and, and this is um, the, the, the section to which I'm referring in terms of seeking the apology from councillor. Councillors and committee members will not make personal reflections on or impute improper motives to any other councillor or committee member or a council officer. To make an allegation of grandstanding to me is to impute an improper motive. Uh, that was not my motive. My motive was sincere and genuine to bring this issue to the chamber so that we could give the head of power to our staff to put this into the maintenance program and get this work done uh, with the resources available uh, over the next four months. So I would still, I still believe that this has been in breach of council policy. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Madam Chair, to take the um, pressure off you guys, Mr. Mayor, if you'll accept my apology, the comment was, in your opinion, uncalled for. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Erkins. Can I, can I just ask a question on that? In, just from yes, Councillor Jones. With the comment, has it got to be directed directly at a person or because I, at, yeah, so for, for the comment of grandstanding in this chamber, just, just out of, for myself, because I'm unclear of what, I didn't believe, yeah, I, I thought the councillor just made a comment along the line of grandstanding. I didn't know that she actually mentioned any particular names or directed it directly at a person. Just curious. Well, to be fair, to be fair, I was directing it towards the mayor. I'll take, and as I said, I apologise for the comment. Thank you. Very much. Okay, thanks, councillors. Uh, don't want to waste the time, well not waste the time, but there's different sections of the standing orders that cover it. The Mayor, certainly the section the Mayor read out is referenced. There's section 358 and then there's section, um, hence I was just looking for the, the good book, um, uh, 360 as well, and it, it gets into... Um, and again, I don't want to give almost a, a, a solicitor's answer, but it gets into the individual's perception and, and it's like a conflict of interest is how the individual uh, reacts to the comment and we're all different, but also um, whether this is free and clear political commentary about a debate or it's a, it's a comment that adversely impacts on the reputation of another. The mayor raised it, uh, and it was legitimately raised as sections in the standing orders that cover it, and each one of these, without me giving a blanket, this is how it works, each one of these would be taken on merit. Thanks, mate. Thanks all. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll consider that matter closed now. So um, back to um, 6.8. Um, is there anyone who wants to speak for or against the motion? Um, Mr. Mayor, did you? There's no one want to speak more for or against. Did you want to have your right of reply? Okay, so um, we'll put that one um, straight to the vote. Those in favour? All in favour. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so now we are on to portfolio reports. So item number seven, so 7.1, is the corporate governance and strategy, people and culture, communications, media, finance and sustainability, ICT and business systems, community representations, advocacy for the 2032 Olympics and Paralympics portfolio report. Over to you, Mr Mayor. Mm, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd now like to uh, provide my report and take it as, uh, as presented and move that that Mayor Otto's corporate governance and strategy, people and culture, communications, media, finance and sustainability, ICT and business systems, community representation and advocacy, 2032 Olympics and Paralympics portfolio report to council be received. I'd like to move that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Can we have a second to Councillor Henshin? Thank you very much. Um, so did anyone want to um, speak to the report? Any questions? I probably just wanted to say, Madam Chair, thanks very much. Um, to the work that our team have done in corporate, corporate and uh, finance, corporate governance and finance particularly. Uh, everyone's relocated down into the one, well, I think we're almost all in the one area now, which is great to see that they're able to now communicate and work closely together. And uh, of course, there's a lot of work happening behind the scenes in corporate governance and finance, uh, as well as, of course, in people and culture. So um, yeah, keep up the great work and thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, so that's been um, the Mayor's portfolio report has been moved and seconded. Um, we'll, if there's no further comments, we'll put that. Oh, we'll put that to the vote. Those in favour? All in favour. Thank you. That's carried. Um, the next up, we have item number eight. Um, eight point one is the um, the corporate and governance strategy. Eight point one is the Adoption of the South Burnett Regional Council Recruitment and Selection Policy, Statutory 014. Um, so we need that to be adopted as presented. Do we have a mover? Councillor Jones, seconded by Councillor Henshin. Um, did we have speakers to? Oh. Uh, Chair, just to um, um, hopefully not preempt any questions, but if there is. Um, commentary. So this one was left lay on the table until this meeting. Uh, you see the highlighted sections in yellow has changed. The query about the uh, 200 kilometres and travel from Brisbane, so that was amended in accordance with the, the query. We went back to the team and get fair and reasonable feedback and so that's been added in. The other highlighted uh, sections are as per the previous presentation of policy, though we did um, We've been working on our workforce plan and, and to align the documents in the very front end of it, the policy statement, and also it's going into the new recruitment um, um, adverts and, and different, or I won't say adverts, but different processes. South Burnett Regional Council is committed to establishing a harmonious and sustainable workforce. This is achieved by adhering to equitable rec recruitment practice, equal opportunities regardless of gender identity, ethnicity, disability or sexual orientation. So it's it was there in the past, but we've just, as we continue to clarify and, and get language changed into current standards. So happy to take any questions on behalf of the manager, but um, it was brought back with those changes after the last month. So do you have any questions or comments with regards to this particular policy? No. So we'll put that policy to the vote. All those in favour? All agreed. Okay, that policy is carried. Thank you very much. Okay, the next one is um, 9.1, which is the debt collection policy, um, the debt collection process update, sorry, um, on page 60. So... what? Officers' recommendation um, that the report be received for information and um, guidance to any proposed operational processes on debt collection be advised. Do we have a mover? Councillor Jones, second at Councillor Erkins, thank you very much. Um, any comments with regards to this? No? Okay, so I'll, no comments. Further discussions will call to the vote. So all those in favour? Unanimous, thank you very much. Motion is carried. Okay, um, item number 10, 10.1, um, page 61 of your agendas. So we have that um, the officer's recommendation that the report is received for um, information, information. 
Is that correct? Yep. The report received for information. So do we have a mover for this? Councillor Henshin, seconded by Councillor Erkins. Thank you very much. Um, any comments or questions with regards to this? Councillor Duff. Uh, thank you. Uh, question to the CEO. Just wanting to, um, I actually have a, a motion that I've um, put forward after this about actually adopting service levels and I just wanted to get a, some um, clarification from you, Mr CEO, if, that, if that's something that's achievable just on those core, bis, core um, business, uh, businesses that council is involved in. Like, for example, I did raise um, earlier in the um, last year about the length of time it takes to fi fix a pothole, all of that kind of thing. I just think, it, um, you know, if we could just get some def definition around, you know, what what we think is, is an acceptable service level, we can start to understand, you know, the pressure the staff's on, the pressure the staff are under and where we need to maybe resource in better, resource better, you know, that kind of thing. So just a question to you, Mr CEO. Is that something that is achievable? That's a nice big question, Councillor. Um, um, hang on, I, just, I was just looking, but anyway, I won't, I'll go off to cough. So we've spoken previously, so if... if do you mind if I just broaden out into a little bit of this and acknowledge the different departments and particularly um, business systems, ICT, with pulling this together? So when the the CRM, so we had the long-standing question on uh, question on notice, which um, wasn't that it was difficult to answer, but the confidence in some of the data was low, and we had all those I call them zombie CRMs. It was old CRM system in the system, and the business systems team had been and moving them out. So T2 went, or the CRM project went live on the 10th of October, and so this is now a report on the um, the customer requests that are coming through the system, and um, councillors and the writing's a little bit small, but it certainly is. Um, Having gone through it, this will be a standing item as noted in the report to every month SLT uh, as far as keeping track. And uh, the data that the, um, is in there is, is exceptionally valuable for trends. Now, the customer service, long answer short, yes, it's achievable, I suppose, in context of... Um, um, sound like I do sound like a solicitor today, don't I? It's achievable in the context of, uh, of the question, also Humphrey. Um, we, we've identified that the, the road maintenance, um, the parks and gardens, the customer service requests were the first areas that we're going to concentrate on, compliance as we go through. The service level catalogue is uh, is in progress. Uh, I would imagine it will continue, well, not imagine, it will be not only uh, this year, the well, the work that's been done this year, but roll into next year's operational plan as far as um, getting that service level catalogue up. Um, and we thought uh, the previous briefing that I'd given to council will do it in bite-sized chunks and then add it together. We've looked at, um, well, spoken to uh, groups such as Mead Perry, not that we've engaged them in them about work they've done with other councils. We've um, considered Ipswich service catalogue, then there's the Noosa one and there's a range of things. So, uh, yes, it is achievable. It's a long-term project. Will you see... Um, um, uh, something happened tomorrow, no, but it will be continued out and it certainly will be continued on in next year's operational plan. And this, um, the longevity of this report and uh, is a really good report. So the, the customer service charter doesn't, to a degree, give, to, give too much guidance on dates and so that's something. But uh, again, without stealing um, the business systems, um, Credit because it's it's their work. When the T two project and the and the went through, they talked to each department or spoke to each department about um, timelines as far as what they thought were achievable and realistic and based on customer and practice. So those timelines are the first part. Now whether we agree with those timelines or not, it's at least given us now a, a basis that we can measure and and we can get accurate data um, that measures against it. And like to use, I mean, the different ones, we've had 90 uh, since October in, in executive services have come through. We've closed out 84, we got six open. There's one overdue. Uh, where we set our uh, target days were 14. Um, the media inquiries that have come through, and this is just through the CRM system. I'm looking at Anthony, I'm not, I'm not um, twisting, the, twisting it there. 
So the office of the CEO, so the target day is 14, the average days to close on those was 15, so we're out by a day. So it now actually gives us uh, a guide that we can measure. The office of the mayor ones, we're turning the CRMs over, so the CRMs that are coming through for the office of the mayor are being turned over on the average of a day. Now, um, so which is, which is terrific, absolutely terrific. And if you look through the difference, finance and corporate, 1,453 in, uh, there's 23 overdue out of that. We haven't started to break up the percentages and see, but this, um, given that we've got this information from October to now, which is really um, not quite half a year, uh, or coming up to half a year, we'll be able to start to analyse this and get trends and guides and, and like and develop our strategy going forward as to as how we deal with these. The other bits that as we come back and... and I, Again, Councillor, without um, getting excited about your question about service levels, we've got uh, a whole tribe of data coming through the email system. And I think uh, probably 18 months ago, maybe even longer, I noted that um, Council had processed a million emails in and out in a calendar year. We are uh, now surpassing that. So without having added them up, we're probably running through about 1.2, 1.4 million emails a year. So we've nearly had a 50% increase in email traffic in, in two years, 18 months. Again, my, my dates and rubbery, we're not talking about ECM yet, the ECM volume that comes through the place. And when we talk about staff efficiency and what we're processing, the volume of material that we're processing through the organisation and the really great thing is as part of the service level discussion and, and it is a slow work in progress but it is a work in progress that will continue into next uh, next financial year. We're pulling confidence in data that is uh, medium to high and we'll actually be able to produce reports like this that will table it down and uh, we're not and we're not there yet and without giving my good friends an ICT a cardiac of actually being able to combine all these different data sets into one report. Um, but it will be so good to be able to say, and I know for myself and, and um, I've been tracking it, so I have uh, three and a half to 4,000 activities that come through the Outlook suite every month. So there's 74 meetings, uh, accepted meetings every month, or generally this is just a sort of a guide, this was January. So three and a half, 3,600 activities, 1,500 emails in, 571 emails out, uh, swag of them that I haven't read that were deleted, and just the volume that's going through the organisation to respond to, and some of that ends up in CRM, some of that ends up in ECM, some of that is dealt with by email. So um, thank you for the opportunity to have a chat because the long answer is yes, the service levels are achievable and we are working towards them in each of the different departments. They're all not going to happen at once, so when we talk about core services, the ones that we have... Uh, currently in train that will come back either through the budget process or before the end of this financial year uh, is the discussion about parks and gardens, road maintenance, customer service. And this is the first step in the customer service, getting the data on the table and happy to take any other questions. Thank you very much, um, CEO Mark. Councillor Shoemaker? Um, yeah, thank you for the report and the effort that's gone into combining all those data sets. I can imagine that hasn't been easy. Um, so thank you, Manager um, Bills and your team. Um, I know we've talked about previously around um, opportunities to triage with new, with new systems and the opportunity to provide perhaps a customer service team, maybe able to provide more information in the front end of a conversation rather than having to log a customer request and go through the system. So I know there's work happening in that space and that's... That's an exciting outcome. I guess my question was just further to that, um, Manager Bills, with this software and the report that you've produced, um, in terms of that triaging and potential software reminders, like I'm just curious how the system actually works um, when it's working properly. Um, opportunity to triage at the front end rather than sort of let some of these inquiries come through and sit there. Um, and um, in terms of a reminder system for our staff, if they are on on the on the list and they hit those trigger dates, is there <coughs> something in the system that reminds people that that request is still live and active? Um, it's probably quite an extensive answer to that one there, Council Shoemaker. But particularly, um, if I just alluded to the point that the foundations now have been a little bit more established, and that report there reflects what's been done and how we've configured the changes within 
the actual software to try and give us that, that base level foundation um, and stats behind that to improve from there. Um, when you talk about notifications or reminders or uh, trigger points, a lot of that is actually included with part of the CRM, which helps form some of that actual reports, um, some of that data in that report you have there. Um, but to explain, probably um, probably to answer a few, a few of those queries you have at the moment, probably takes a little bit more than the time we have at the moment too. Um, but I can definitely take some of those questions on notice and add more detail to the report. And you know, the system has got a stronger foundation to be able to address some of those concerns a bit more accurately and have more faith in the data that we produce here. So. Yeah, I really, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I think that, that level of understanding around how the system will actually work, um, that vision for triaging and how, you know, I guess I can see the opportunity but through using this software effectively and, and by, um, you know, empowering our community, our, our customer service team with the, the knowledge and the skills and the training and the support they need to be successful, I can see, um, you know, nothing but success or in, in improvement moving ahead. Um, the other thing I guess I was thinking just in reading this report is um, if we're setting these timeframes and expectations, it's probably a question to you, CEO Mark, when we're actually answering some of these phone calls, in terms of that service level, I think when we laid out the customer service charter, we're really talking about trying to make it more personable and making sure people felt heard that their inquiries were taken and um, that they felt that they had a contact point or somebody that they could talk to about that. So my question is more around, you know, when we take that first initial phone call, is there an opportunity now that we have some of these time frames laid out that our customer service staff or, or whoever's answering that call might say, well, thank you so much, Mr. Jones, for your call. I can let you know that that's been logged in our system and you can expect to hear something from somebody within... 10 days or 14 days or, you know, 24 days or whatever the standard that we're setting here is. I'm just welcome your thoughts in that regard. I'll speak anecdotally first, but I might need to take that one on notice, not because I don't want to answer it, but certainly the staff are, you over here um, with the different sections. Now, there's some clear, and I'm happy to take anyone else's thoughts on this, but certainly the ones where I've been either positioned near or uh, the front counter, uh, certainly the the uh, some of the compliance ones with the overgrown allotments and that because there's a there's an extended period and so the the front counter staff say so like okay you this will take and there is and um, the ones that are we coming back through um, again um, um, oh, well, this is not a, a, a comprehensive list but certainly uh, litigation and or um, claims for for um, uh, liability claims, uh, the correspondence is, is engaged that these are often, I can almost quote the paragraph, these are often complex and detailed matters and so the response on this will take some time and we will get back to you as soon as uh, administrative action complaints and that have time frames set in them as part of the correspondence going back. So I can say with certainty, yes, it is happening in, in, in sections um, and it's not, and I'm conscious of not saying it doesn't happen across the board or it is, but yeah, I just need to check with the customer service team as to or what and how many and how often, but yeah, certainly in, in the sections that I have a, either an active or day-to-day -day engagement with, it, yeah, it is happening in that space. Yeah, thank you. I'd certainly appreciate it. I think it's an important conversation and just in terms of that communication piece and the, the expectation on both sides, you know, I think it's really important that, um, you know, if we're talking to each other and we're providing enough information, I think um, sometimes we can get better outcomes. So... No, really appreciate the work that's gone in. Thank you so much and certainly appreciate the incredible work our team does. Some of these numbers are enormous. I cannot believe over. Um, we've increased our email traffic to that regard. Although looking at my inbox, I guess I probably can. <laughs> thank you very much, Councillor Duff. Uh, thank you. I might, um, on the back of what um, CEO Mark said about um, service levels, you're already working on that, so I won't worry about my motion, but I did want to ask some questions through you, Madam Chair, um, because I've s noticed in this report that it says that um, with a certain number of days, infrastructure um, it has closed off on, and 
the average days to take to close off and things like that. And what I have noticed is with the new system, and I did have this conversation with General Manager me and is that <clears throat> closing off is, has, has meant that it's simply in the program of works and the customer, that, and that doesn't mean that it's actually going to happen for, it could be two months, three months, four months. So to say that it's closed off after, you know, a certain number of days is probably not um, a genuine close off and that's why the question about um, that Councillor Schumacher asked about the reminder is a discussion I had with General Manager Meehan about, you know, when when's that going to kick in and that road actually get done? And the same with I would love to see with um, compliance and all of those different sections where we actually got back to the original customer and said, well, you know, this matter, we believe this matter is resolved. Are you, are you happy that that's been addressed to, to your, um, you know, your address, your concerns have been addressed adequately? That kind of service because i i'm getting continuous people ringing me back and saying you know i put this overground allotment in you know so many days back and or months even and it, nothing happens and then i go back and find out that it that's still in that process and i try to explain to them it's going to take this long you know all that kind of information that customers it, it's just the whole, like Councillor Schumacher was saying, it's that whole relationship building with the customer instead of them thinking, oh, well, you know, nothing happened. I'm just going to have to go back to my councillor. If someone could just say, well, you know, this is closed off, you know, or this is what we're doing or this is the process, instead of just them putting it in and just sort of no feedback. So that's, they're the questions and particularly the one to um, General me me and about the um, the length of time to do a road and the reminders. Thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks for the question, Council. I sort of half expected it. So, um, just for Council's information, so the infrastructure maintenance budget is up on its first round at the Budget Committee next week. We were going to table and walk Council through slashing, spraying, unsealed roads, and sealed road intervention levels. So, if Council was happy to wait, we would add that to our presentation and probably discuss it inclusively. Um, that's not to set the budget next week and say that's what it is, but we thought we would start that conversation. We actually have a pretty good presentation that the team have put together around the amount of defects that we have. And I think it's probably timely for Council to talk through those issues about how do you want to respond to customers. So if Council was happy for that, we would um, put that through next week's meeting for discussion as part of that presentation. If I think it's good to put it all together so that way we've got it in context. Yep, happy with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. And that would be great if that could be added to to that discussion for next week. Thank uh, you. And so, sorry, through you, Madam Chair, just a com just a question to I guess the CEO about the other compliance and all of those, you know, getting back to the customers on the compliance, like Councillor Shoemaker said. Do we have? Are we getting back to the customer at the end and saying, you know, this is we believe this is closed, or are we just closing it off and not getting back to the customer? Those kind of questions. Okay, uh, again, I'll, I'll go through the practical example. I'm a, a bit like a couple of other councillors, a fan of snaps and solves. So the ones that are, um, the ones that I've sent in um, through snaps and solve, where I have hit somewhere, have been um, not only acknowledged, but I've got the thanks very much. This has been closed out. It's pretty generic, stock standard email, but it's I get the close out email with the through the through snaps and solve into the council system. Um, what we might do is a might folder. So I've got the expectation, customer service staff and advising callers and timeframes and, and I'll add close out as a question on notice. Um, and then that way to, for my 20 cents worth, I think the staff are doing an excellent job as far as trying to close these out and getting back to the customer. But um, as I said, we'll treat it as a question on notice and bring it back next month. Thank you um, um, to you, Madam Chair. And if it could include what close out actually means. Thank you. Yeah, no, certainly, Councillor. Rightio. So um, if there's no further questions, so we'll put that, um, we'll move that motion. So um, the officer's recommendation is that the report is received for information, moved by Councillor Henshin, seconded by Councillor Erkins. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Motion is carried. Thank you very much. So the next one is um, the community representation and advocacy, um, page 69 of your agendas. 11.1 um, .1 is the Anzac Day 2023. So you've all got your rosters in front of you. 
So, um, so the committee recommends to council that the following council representatives attend the respective ceremony and carry out responsibilities as required on behalf of council and the list is there. Do we have a mover for that one? Councillor Shoemaker, seconder. Councillor Erkins, thank you very much. Now, Councillor Duff, did you want to um, talk th to thank this? Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Just on the Prost and Dawn service in the past, I think it's um, General Manager Jarvis has attended that one and on the, in her absence, I'd just like to maybe nominate her to, to attend that. She's enjoyed going to it, if she's available. And also um, the Mergen Dawn and Fellowship I'm not able to attend and I think the Mayor did last time, so I'm just seeking um, support from the Mayor to perhaps attend that those two at Mergen. Thank you. Mr Mayor? All right, yes, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly um, I'm happy to go to the uh, Mergen Dawn service 4.45, so I could do that one uh, if it suits. Um, sorry, at 5.30. Yep. The 5.30 one. Sorry, sorry, Madam Chair. Yeah, I could do the 5.30. Um, I've also received an invitation from the Nango to, to be the guest speaker there at 9 o'clock. So if I could do that and be back to Kingaroy by 11 for the Kingaroy Memorial Service, I'd be happy to also be slotted in there at the Nango if... Uh, if council's comfortable with that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So we're putting Councillor, uh, we're putting um, GM Jarvis in for Proston. Radio. So are there any other, Councillor Shoemaker, yes. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to check with Councillor Henshin. I always try to support him being that um, both yourself and uh, Council Potter and Mayor Otto attend the King Boy service. Um, so I just wanted to check Councillor Henshin, I did come here the year before, one day last year, just want to check how I can help you and make sure, um, you know, that uh, you're comfortable with me doing the, the one day service and just check in if anything's changed for you. Through you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Shoemaker. Um, yeah, look, I, and I stated last year to try and get around all of these on Anzac Day is just near impossible, and certainly for me and the area I cover, and I'm happy to do that. I have been asked, um, even though it's not on our agendas, in relation to the Boondooma homestead, uh, the time factor there, I'm not sure how, and I guess that's a work in progress as to what their program and agenda is for the day. I've contacted them. Seriously do appreciate, Councillor Shoemaker, you, you helping, helping me out previously. And um, if you look just at mine, five and eight o'clock in Wandai to be back in Cumbia at 8.45, to be back in Wurulan at 11 o'clock, uh, I'm hoping Bunduma might be a little later than that because otherwise I'll be asking Councillor if we can get a helicopter or a, or a plane or something to tra traverse this wonderful region that we have. But... Um, <coughs> Certainly be in touch, Councillor Shoemaker, and uh, appreciate any help in, in relation to whether that can fit in or not. But certainly trying to farm, not only myself, but I appreciate all the other councillors around. And when you look at that agenda, and I think the public really needs to be made aware, perhaps in our media releases, that we do do our best to get around all of these functions on Anzac Day. Thank you. Um, so maybe with that in mind, um, maybe next year we need to add Bunduma Homestead to this list. Is that what you're saying? Uh, Madam Chair, if um, by all means, but just I'm trying to get confirmation with that just uh, as we're okay. here in relation to emails. Okay. Um, so perhaps we could add it uh, and depending on their time frame, I know previously they've worked in uh, very diligently with myself and Councillor Duff to try and fit other things in, not necessarily Anzac Day, but uh, we don't seem to be able to get a representative at the Bunduma Homestead and I know they're not mentioned there, but um, always get invited. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Shoemaker. Um, yes, thank you. Um, Councillor Henshin, I'd be happy to, I think last year the timing worked out that I come through Warul and after Wandai, just in, like, they were just starting. So if that is, if that helps you in any way, um, I could potentially cover you in Warul and as well. Um, but yes, agree. It's, it's a wonderful day. I really do enjoy Anzac Day across our region and thank all of our RSLs for the work they do in making the services um, and working with our exec services team to make it happen. It's a really wonderful day, so thank you. 
Thank you very much. So if everyone's happy with that list now, so um, that has been, yeah, that's been moved by Councillor Shoemaker, um, seconded by Councillor Jones. So we need to, that the committee, committee, committee rec um, um, recommends to Council that the following representatives attend the respective ceremonies to carry out responsibilities as required on behalf of Council. Um, Mr CEO, did we have to say as amended at the end of that one? Or not, we don't. We're right with that. Okay, so um, moved by Councillor Shoemaker, seconded by Councillor Erkins. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Okie dokes. So now we're on to um, item number 12, 12.1, which is the um, Community Development Arts and Heritage Library Services Portfolio Report. Um, I've got the report in front of me that I will just point out. I won't read the whole report. Um, I just want to bring up, up a couple of things. So the South Burnett Regional Council are sponsoring the Red Ant Roundup, Medical Roundup, this conference this weekend on March 11. Um, so we'll have a lot of the health um, professionals in town with regards to that. But also this weekend there is so much on. We've got the Bowie Dance, we've got the Back to Nanango, we've got the King Roy Men's Shed, Dinner Under the Stars, you've got Graham House Community Open Day there, you've got Dragon Boat Racing at BP Dam. Yes, you heard that correctly. And you've got the Maiden World Bull Ride. And also Proston Show. And Proston Show, thank you very much. So, um, yeah, so there is so much on this weekend. So keep your hats on for everything you're going to. Um, I'm actually really sad that I'm going to miss out on the um, the trial one for the dragon boat racing. Um, the round two of the local build small grants um, have been extended until Monday the 20th of March 23. The Youth Council, we've now got 10 new young people and four existing members um, that are being inducted on Tuesday. And then there's a, the two-day leadership conference, um, which is on the 22nd and 23rd of April. Um, you've got the community events, so you've got the Harmony Day on in the Town Hall Forecourt on Saturday the 25th of March, which should be a really good day. Um, and then with regards to the libraries, um, there's some amazing author talks coming up with Anne Marks. So at the King Roy Library on Friday the 10th of March and 10 a.m., uh, at 10th of March at 10 a.m. or at the Nanango Library at 1 p.m. Um, so there's – and there's a lot of things happening there um, – the library in the first five ever doing outreach sessions to St John's. Um, we're working, we're doing a ready for work program in Mergen with CTC and it's really good that we're working with all the different community organisations and Centre Care and Easter Community Day, so save the date for that one. That's on Wednesday the 5th of April for a family fun day of Easter egg hunts, craft and activities from 9 till 2. There'll be more um, information coming soon on that one. And Barry Cross and Les Henning, um, the RSL reps will be doing on the 21st of April 23. Um, the local high schools will be invited along to have a, um, a full run through of the order of service with background information, in depth understanding of what happens during a service. The presentation will complete the parade and the service being held. Um, okay, and the other thing I would like to bring up is that we've, um, we've got some workshops coming up. Not some workshop, we've got some. Well, I suppose they are a bit of a workshop with regards to how children are faring in the South Burnett um, with regards to Australian Early Development Census um, data, um, which according to the data we're not faring too well. So we've got some forums coming up. We've got Mergen Town Hall on the 20th of March and you do need to register to go to them, please. Um, the Nango Cultural Centre on the 21st of March. Um, the Wando Town Hall on the 18th of April, Blackbutt um, State School Hall on the 19th of April and the Kingroy Town Hall on the 20th of April. So it would be really great to see everyone there and any community members or any community organisations. Um, this is a really important issue. It takes a village to raise a child and I would like to see the halls packed for this for our children, for our future. Um, so I'd like to move that my Community Development Arts and Heritage and Library Services Portfolio Report um, be moved. Can I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Duff. Um, any questions? Beautiful, no questions. So um, all those in favour? Oh, okay, yep, six to zero. Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay, so... Next up, we have the um, item number 12.2. So it's the officer's recommendation 
that the community and lifestyle operational update be received. Can I have a mover? Councillor Jones, thank you very much. Councillor Erkins seconded. Thank you. So are there any questions with regards to the, um, the update, the community and lifestyle operational update, which is on page 74 of your agendas? Thank you. So if there's no questions with regards to that, we'll, um, that's been moved and seconded by Councillor Jones, seconded by Councillor Erkins, so that the community and lifestyle operational update be received. All those in favour? Unanimous carried. Thank you very much. Okay, community development, health, um, youth and senior citizens, the Stronger Communities Program, round eight. So we have it, um, you have it there that the officer's recommendation that we've cancelled that um, request made to the Honourable David Little Proud, Federal Member for Maranoa, to consider an application from South Burnett Regional Council for a replacement rainwater tank at, Maid tank at Maidenwell Hall and replacement chairs at the Nanango Cultural Centre. A request be made to the Honourable um, Colin Boyce, um, Federal Member for Flynn, to consider an application for South Burnett Regional Council to install a replacement shade um, cloth at Jurong Hall over the play area. And a request be made to the Honourable Lou O'Brien, Federal Member for Wide Bay, to consider an application from the South Burnett Regional Council to cons construct a half basketball court near the Mergen Skate Park. And Council commits 50% of co-contribution as part of the 23-24 Capital Works Program for Parks and Facilities. Can I have a mover? Um, Councillor Shoemaker, seconder Councillor Duff. Um, Councillor Shoemaker, did you want to speak to oh, Councillor Duff? So, Thank sorry. you. I just um, wanted to see if, if um, there was an appetite in, in the chamber just on that um, to change the Jurong Hall one. I'm not taking anything away from Jurong, but I did speak to General, to Manager Leanne about changing that to the Prostel Lookout because we met with them yesterday and with the with the um, heritage uh, representatives, and there's a lot. There's, they're concerned about the, f and s there's a whole issue around putting the signs up and then not doing the bollards and making the area safe. And we, uh, at the committee meeting, we put it through that we would um, support putting the signs up, but now there's an issue around the safety aspects. And it's just timely because they've got their centenary and they would like to have that lookout completed. I'm just wondering if, if we could change that to the actual Proston lookout funding rather than the Jurong Shade Sale because um, Leanne said that that's not something that's absolutely urgent. So I just, just I'm happy for you to yeah, comment. Again, thank you through Councillor, you. Madam yeah. Chair, we'll agree to disagree, Councillor Duff, with that Jurong Shade Sale. Uh, fairly important to the kids there. Very important to the kids there. We want to protect them from the sun. That's been on the conversation piece for quite some period of time. And as far as the um, tank is concerned there, so no, I'm going to vehemently uh, suggest that we support the shade sale and the tank at Jurong. Um, so, completely appreciate the cross and lookout, but um, so, so, yeah, I, the conversation with the mothers I've had there in Jurong in relation to that shade sale is a priority. So, um, yeah, no, I, I uh, am fully supportive of certainly number two being in there with the uh, shade cloth at Jurong Hall over the play area. So, um, yeah, happy to have further conversation with that. So, so through you, Madam Chair, I was just wondering, because it's only a small amount that you're asking for the shade sale, and I think you can apply for up to 50000 is it possible to put the two projects in? We just It's just that there's no money to do any work to even make that lookout area safe, even just to put the bollards there. So I'm just wondering if there's an op opportunity to put two projects up in, in the um, Colin Boyce's area. Because I don't want to take away from Jurong either. It was just, I just saw it, just the frustration yesterday about not having any funding just to make that area safe, that was all. Um, Councillor Henshaw. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I take away from Jurong is exactly what you're trying to do, Councillor Duff. Um, that shade shade cloth there, uh, no, and and um, you know Jurong 
doesn't get a lot and we get bashed from pillar to post on all our small villages and you've heard me say in this chamber about the villages and what I've asked for and that horrible word I or what we are trying to do for our villages and small communities and that's a small thing and for the benefit of the kids and the parents out there in Jurong and that shade sale is in my personal opinion a priority they've been asking and talking about for that for some some time so um yeah I, I can't I will not support taking that out of there dot point two okay thank you very much councillor Shoemaker. um yes thank you I was having a conversation with councillor Duff prior to starting this meeting and I suggested it might be an opportunity to see this Proston lookout actually um I guess completed as a project um I see we can apply for up to twenty thousand dollars per um funding of up to $20,000 for capital projects um, through the Stronger Communities Program to each federal member. Um, being that the Jurong Hall project is a $9,560 project and we're asking for a 50% contribution of four seven eighty, um, I'm wondering in terms of that Proston Lookout, if we added that in for um, an additional project to Colin Boyce, I guess I was hoping Manager Leanne might be able to provide, I'm not sure how much funding we would actually need. Um, Councillor Duff, I know I haven't been involved in the conversation. I know Councillor Jones, you might have had some conversations. But, um, so I'm not sure, I guess, just trying to take advantage of the grant opportunity. It, uh, th thank you. It's a staged project and even just to, even just to do the bollards would, would be a help. So that's why... I, th could I? Yeah, like that would be that would be a start. That would at least make that area safe. That was the biggest concern was just to put the bollards across where the signs are going. So could we make it? Could I? Could I move an amendment to the officer's recommendation that we add Proston Lookout and ten thousand dollars toward towards their um towards the, the project. Okay. Um, so, yep, so that's amendment adding, no, you're right, adding the um, Proston Lookout to the Jurong Hall. Um, can I just throw over, sorry to put you on the spot, GM Meehan, but I know we just, sorry, I know we discussed um, the Proston Lookout at, um, one of our meetings recently and I thought that was going to be done through your like putting the signs posts up and things like that so I'm just wondering whether the ten thousand dollars would be enough to even do the bollards and things like that uh, through you madam chair I understand there was a meeting yesterday so I might just give it to councillor Duff if that's okay because I wasn't at that meeting but the infrastructure and park staff were yeah, yes um so so that's exactly right so there was that to do the whole project, it's going to be a design for the road entrances and all sorts of things, which is going to be a significant budget implication. But the uh, the main concern was just, like I say, the bollards to make that, where they're going to put the signs up just to make that area safe, just to do some levelling and put the bollards. So that would be um, if there was any, any funding at all because Manager Leanne was just saying, well, we haven't got any funding to do any of that. So... And then um, I know that she had a discussion with um, um, Michael Wall to see if they could do something even just as a temporary basis just to put maybe rocks and logs. So, you know, even any, any sort of contribution would help towards making that area sa safe for that um, centenary and so that they could put the signs up. Sorry, as the mover of the original motion, Councillor Shoemaker, do you agree to that amendment? Do you agree to that um, adding on the um, the Proston the bollards at Proston lookout? Um, yes, I think it should be included in the motion. It's something then the the staff can go back and explore following the conversations that were had yesterday. Okay. Um, you know, if it, if there is an opportunity to seek up to twenty thousand dollars for. Um, the Honourable Colin Boyce's uh, electorate of Flynn. Um, I certainly know that both those pro uh, projects, certainly the Jurong 
um, hall is a very important asset to the Jurong community, as is the Proston lookout to the Proston community. So happy for those conversations to progress. Um, Recognise that we probably can't complete the um, financial and resource implications because we don't fully understand that. Um, but if there's an opportunity to leverage some um, funding from our federal members to see these projects achieved, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, and I think we should always be looking for funding when there's opportunities to um, attract it into our region. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I probably don't need to, but I will double check, Councillor Duff. You're all right, seeing as you change that. I just wonder whether it changed the, um, because it might be a bit of earthworks and and whether they want to put actually bollards or whether they want to put you know logs and rocks. Whether it can be just to make the um, the to make the signage area safe or something like that, rather than be specific. Okay, I might. Um, so, Jeremy, and that wording. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, I would just go and a project at the Proston Lookout and then we can get it, yeah. Because okay. I'm not sure I want to put safe in the resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Erkins. Councillor sorry. Um, thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. I just, um, just reading the eligibility considerations, it says that there's a maximum of 20 projects to be um, funded in each electorate. And um, so I'm just wondering, so we've had four in that makes it five. I'm just wondering if five, you know, whether one will be dropped out anyway. I'm just wondering why we put four. Is, I'm presuming the 20 projects are spread a, around a fair area. Yeah, for ped, per federal member. So he would have a fairly big area. So... You know, I'm just a little concerned that we don't really want... I wouldn't like to see the shade sales dropped in favour of something else. So I, I just don't know whether there could be some more creative... Yeah, yeah but there's 20, a maximum of 20 projects across the electorate. Well, he would have a pretty big electorate, so we're asking for five projects... Um, I don't think that's much different to what we're asking with David, um, the Honourable David Littleproud. We're already asking for two projects through him as well. Okay. So this is just another. This okay. is just two projects through Colin okay, Boyce right. now too. Okay. Um, are there any other? Did you have anything more to say, Councillor Erkins? No. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions or comments with regards to this? So. Councillor Henson. Just one through you, Madam Chair. It says there, um, be used in the MP's electorate if it includes portable equipment. Some of these things we've discussed aren't portable. Eligibility considerations, one of them is be used in the MP's electorate if it includes portable equipment. Can that's only a consideration. That that's only a, I believe that's only a consideration that they may take into account. Um, I don't know, but <clears throat> yep. Um, if there are any questions, Councillor Jones? Yes, just for a bit of useless information, uh, Madam Chair. What happens if we put this in and we get a part of the $20,000 that we're applying? How do we uh, prioritise which which event is going to get done on that particular issue there on dot point. You've got two, two things in there totalling 19000 or thereabouts. What happens if we don't get all the money and we have enough to do one? What do we do about priority? They choose. So, what? Just saying, just if you put in two and you only get part. Um, I do believe that's chosen by the federal member at that time when they, when they do. So if they've got... If they're down to two and it's two of ours, then they will choose which one. So I do believe it's down to them, not to anyone uh, else. So, so Councillor Duff. So um, I, I actually have sat on the chair on the on the panel, and I'm probably um, would be, will be asked again. I always sit on this wide bay panel, and it's just um, recommendations from. There's about three or four people on the panel, and we just 
look at look at the whole list and if they tick the boxes we try and get everybody's in you know we try we try really hard to get as many it's pretty much like our grants and donations we try to get everybody some money it's not like we very careful not to wipe people out so i don't i don't think it's an issue yeah but i mean the fact that we've got two projects and i'm on the panel it helps <laughs> will help us I have to just say that, like, I'm going to be pushing for our two projects. Yeah, and I and I'm pre I've had a lot of success, so it's not. I don't think it's an issue. Watch this space. Thank you, Councillor Duff. Any other questions and comments? So we will um, move this. So it's with the um, with the change in that to add the Proston lookout. So the committee recommends to council. We've got the David Little Proud for the rainwater tank at Maidenwell Hall and the chairs at Nanango. Um, Honourable Colin Boyce for the um, shade cloth at Jurong and the project at Proston Lookout and Lou O'Brien for the um, half basketball court near the Mergen Skate Park and council commits 50% contribution as part of the 23-24 Capital Works Program to facilities and parks. Um, all those in favour? Unanimous, thank you very much. It's carried. Beautiful. So I've had um, someone knocking at their um, watch to me today. So um, I'm gathering that they're actually under the impression that they would like to go for lunch. Um, so I might call to council. So do we adjourn the meeting for lunch? Councillor Henschen, second to Councillor Erkins. All those in favour? Right, lunch, lunch it is. Thank you very much. Unanimous. Um, so I'm thinking we've got a little bit left. What do you think? What's the time? One o'clock? Back here by one? So do you want an hour, which is quarter past one? Just uh, quarter past one then. Okay.